For this section, we need to look at galactic rotation curves. Now we have a beautiful photograph of the Andromeda galaxy here. Um, all the stars are basically rotating around the galactic center. They're in an orbit around the, the galactic center. So when we observe these galaxies, we can see these stars rotating or orbiting the galactic center. There it is, it's moving around the galactic center. So the question is, what observations do we need to make to calculate the velocity at that point P? Well, since it's moving away from us and we know the plane of the galaxy, there will be some redshift. So you'll see a Doppler redshift effect as it moves away from us. And we basically have to look at the, the idea of using Newton's law of gravitation to find out an expression for the orbital velocity. Remember, when it's in an orbit, when it's going around in a circle, this will be equal to the centripetal force. It depends on the distance from the point to the center of the circle. Now, we're going to take the center part of the galaxy, which is like a giant halo of stars, and this point P, this star at point P, is orbiting around inside the halo. And this halo has a radius of R. Now the question is, what does the force acting on P, the gravitational force, depend on? Well, it depends on the mass, using uh, Newton's law of gravitation. However, we can say that it's only the mass on the inside of this sphere. The mass on the outside of the sphere isn't included because if we take the point P, it's attracted to the mass here, but it's also attracted to the mass there. And in what happens mathematically speaking is that of the ring of mass outside the orbit where P is, is basically all cancelled out. So as if there's no mass outside because the effect of this is cancelled by the effect of this. So that we can remove. So it just depends on what the value for R is, the, the distance between the P and the center of the sphere. Here we're going to look at it mathematically speaking with the formula. Now this force due to gravity will be equal to the centripetal force. So here we have this um, sphere of stars that P is orbiting. So the gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force. And there we have it. Now we can simplify this. Uh, we can cancel M and we can cancel R. So we end up with this. GM over R is equal to V squared. Now, well it all depends on the mass of this, uh, the stars on the inside of this sphere. Um, but let's consider uh, the density. Let's say we have a uniform density, rho, and this density is equal to mass divided by volume, this equation changes if you substitute for mass that g rho v divided by r is equal to v squared. But we know that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, so we substitute that in, and then we can cancel one of the r's, and we end up with by isolating for v, that v is equal to 4 pi g rho divided by 3, the square root of all that, times by r. And this is the equation as it appears in the data booklet. So what we can say is that the velocity is proportional to the radius, or the distance from the center. And this is supported by the evidence, the, the, the values that we take. So we have this relationship, this proportionality, straight line graph, to the origin. Let's look at the entire galaxy. We've looked at this, v is equal to the root of 4 pi g rho over 3 times by r, the velocity is proportional to the radius, but this is only in the center part when we have a uniform density. So it only works for this center part there. Outside, the, sense, the density drops. So in this area, the density is no longer uniform. It drops off very rapidly. 
In fact, the density is very low after, outside the, the center halo of um, the center sphere of, of the stars in the galactic center. So you would expect it to drop off much quicker. In fact, you know that the orbital velocity is equal to root gm over r. So you would expect it to drop off with uh, 1 over the square root of r. So this is basically what we would expect. We know for the centre part, it goes up linearly, more or less, and then it gets to the outside of this centre sphere of stars, and then you would expect it to drop off with the uh, 1 over the square root of r. But what actually happens when you look at the observation of all the stars as you move away from the centre of the galaxy? It looks like this. It basically levels off. So the uh, rotation speed is more or less constant. Now, what does that depend on? If the rotation speed is much faster here than we would expect it, it must mean there's another uh, force which is actually causing this centripetal force for it to go so quickly. So there must be a large mass that we're not able to see. It's not visible. It doesn't emit light. There is some mass there which is causing this force. But it's, uh, it's basically dark. We can't see it. There is basically a great deal of dark matter which is responsible for the gravitational force which keeps the orbital speed so high in the flat part of the graph. Let's look at that in a little bit more detail. So the value for the orbital speed gives you an idea of the mass distribution in the galaxy. So at any point you can basically find out what is the mass on the inside of that sphere where that uh, star is. The velocity curve becomes flatter outside the center halo. That's a key point. And the last thing is, according to the visible galaxy, the, the light that we can see, in other words, the matter that we can see, the curve should follow close to a 1 over the square root of our relationship, but it doesn't. It has this very flat feature here. But there's lots of matter that we're not able to see. In fact, this is what you would expect from the visible disk. And, and basically what happens if you look at all other radiation from from the 21 centimeter hydrogen line for example which means it's not emitting in, in anywhere near the visible part of the spectrum uh, we actually would expect the velocity to be that's why it basically levels off there's a lot of matter here that is just not visible In fact, we look at different galaxies. The rotation curves basically tell us the same. For the center part, the center sphere of stars, which is in the galactic center, it's fairly linear. But then it drops off slightly, and in some cases, carries on increasing. So this is basically because of this extra matter, this dark matter that we're not able to see in the galaxy. So these rotation curves depend on the distribution of this dark matter as you move away from the galactic center. Or it, another way of saying it, it depends on the, the density. This rotation curve is uh, one that you should be able to uh, recall and be able to explain why it has this shape. So this is what is, is expected. And this is what is observed. This is a simplification of that. Of course, it depends from galaxy to galaxy how the mass is distributed, how it would look here. But it, they more or less say the same story.